go. Look what Weber sent me in the mail. Let's open it up. I already know what it is because I asked him to send it to me. one beer making machine it's got jets you ain't gonna worry about burning Let's see what happens. Check this out. Set it up. I got six and a half gallons in here. I'm going to turn it on, start heating it up, and then I'm going to get my grain ready. Six pounds of German wheat, six pounds of German pilsner, and half a pound of chocolate malt. And I'm going to run it through this grinder. circulating pump on. This is going to circulate water over top of the grain. It's going to pull it from the bottom of the basket and circulate it over top of the grain. time for us to drain and sparge. Take the lid off. There's little hooks on the side of this. And uh, we can lift this whole thing up out of here. Now I'm going to sparge it. Just going to rinse this grain off. Trying to get all the sugars out of it. away and I'm gonna pull this out and get rid of it. I'm gonna add an ounce of Hearst Bucker Spat and an ounce of Holler Tile Blanc. These are my hops. I put them in this hop basket that I got that comes with this thing. I'll 
bring this up to a boil for 90 minutes. So it's been 90 minutes. This smells amazing. Wow. It's the best smelling stuff in the, in the world to me. Let's remove our hot basket. Man, that's like the best smelling cereal in the world. Find a place to put this. Now we gotta rapidly cool this. So we're gonna use this wart chiller. I got a pond pump hooked up. I'll show it to you. you plug this in. All right, this is a wart chiller. We're gonna put ice in this uh, trash barrel here. We're gonna recycle back through it. Make sure you sanitize everything you got. Where are we at? Put some ice in here. With beer, you have to rapidly cool it as fast as possible. You have to sanitize everything twice. It's a hassle. I know I got a water chiller. I just don't feel like hooking it up to do all this. This was quick and easy today. Plus, I have to get adapters to run to this small hose. And I don't want to go to the hardware store. But that's it. Cool it down. While it's cooling down, matter of fact, I'm going to add some, uh, some golding. Cooling down, and this is for more for the smell of things because you want your beer to smell real good, too. Add a little bit of Goldings, just uh, you know, a couple sprinkles, some hops, more hops. Come back to you when she's cooled down and we're moving her to our bucket. It's cooled down now. All right, so I just did a gravity reading, and it's at exactly where I want it at 1.050. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish moving it to this bucket. That came out perfect. Uh, when you want beer, you either want it 1.040 or 1.050. Put my yeast in this bucket while it's, while it's all aerated. I'm gonna use uh, German ale Kolsch yeast. It's uh, White Labs WLP 029. Then I'm gonna use this pack of Bavarian wheat yeast. I'm mixing it up. And your gravity's over 
just add water until it, it goes down to where you want it. Put your lid and your airlock on it. Wait a couple weeks. All right, I'm gonna show you how to use this controller. You have an on and off button here. Then you have a button that controls this jet. It sucks water from here, throws it back through the top to splash over top of your grain. Turn this on, you wanna hit this button here. It's automatically gonna go to the power. Now you might have to adjust this power depending on what kind of breaker you got. I had to keep adjusting it because I need a new breaker that's of bigger amperage. So I had to run it slow at 700 watts. I mean, it still ran pretty quick. But once I adjust my breaker, run at 2,500 watts, you'll knock this out. You'll come up to temp in no time. Then you want to change your temp. I usually do an hour cook with grain at 160 degrees. And then you, if you ever want to change this, this is how long it, it runs. You just go hit, hit the uh, timer button. Once you want to run, you just hit this button. It starts heating up your water and its clock won't start counting until you're at 160 degrees. Now, after you come to temp and you cook for 60 minutes, you're ready to do your 90 minute run. You want to boil. So here's what you do. You hit this button uh, and then hit this temperature button Boiling's 212 degrees, and that's as high as this thing will go. It won't go any higher than that, which is also awesome because you don't want to scorch nothing, and you're not going to scorch nothing with this, but, uh, you know, just in case. So as soon as it comes up, it says boiling right here, right? You change your timer. 90 minutes. Oh, oh, oh. It's paying attention to something else. So once you're at 90 minutes, and hit start. Fuck. Fucked that up, didn't I? There you go. Now you hit start, and this little H right here means it's rolling. I don't know what it stands for. Maybe it means it's getting hot. I don't know. But this will come up to boiling, and once it's boiling, it will stay there, and then after 90 minutes, this thing will make a noise, a little, little beeping noise, and it'll let you know that it's finished. It's that easy. This thing is awesome. Uh, really easy to run so you hear it heating up I, uh, I already ran I just figured I'd come back and show you how to run this controller this thing's pretty neat I can't wait to make some more beers and I can't wait to drink this dunkel all right it's been a week and our beers about ready it's time to uh, move it to a secondary vessel so we could clean it up So I got it transferred. This is all the nasty, all the sludge and yeast. And there's the goodness. We're going to clean it up even more. Say she'll be ready in about another, another week or so. Probably not even that long. This this beer actually worked quick. It went super fast. This was almost down. It was almost done fermenting two days.
because I added both those packs of yeast. Um, it went from 1.050 to 1.010 in, in a, a day and a half. So uh, right now we're just cleaning it up. I'm going to let this sit. And then uh, I know the gravity's done. It's ready to drink. But we're going to have to uh, bottle it. So I'm going to put this lid on there and let it sit for, you know, maybe another week. All right, our beer's done. It's time to carbonate it. You go about this two ways. You could add some uh, dextrose, bottle for a minute, or you can keg it. So I got this little Vever keg. Why not? Also, when you keg beer, it comes out cleaner, cleaner looking. You don't have that yeast sediment in the bottom of the bottle. Uh, and you don't have to wait two weeks. You usually got to wait about a day. One thing I didn't say about kegging in that other video I, I made is when you keg, you want to refrigerate this so that the beer gets cold and the carbonation gets inside the beer. It usually takes about a day to two days to get that carbonation good in that beer. But two days is better than two weeks. It's quicker, that's for sure. So let's do it. I'm going to move some of the beer into this keg, throw it in the fridge, carbonate it. I'll show you that step. So I got my beer added to my keg. We, we got quite a bit more left, so we could do this as many times as we need to, or we could get a better, bigger keg, or we could, like I said, add some uh, some corn sugar to it and uh, bottle for a minute. So now I'm gonna add some gas to it. Oh fuck! Way too much. So we got our CO2 added. I'm going to roll this thing around a little bit. Work that CO2 into that beer. And I'm going to put it in the fridge. And then tomorrow, this shit should be good. Tomorrow, it should be ready. go good and carbonated that's a good wheat beer I think next time I make it I'll use a little less of the chocolate malt um, it kind of has a little coffee twang to it a little too much for my liking uh, it's good it's a good wheat beer uh, it's one of my favorite recipes I'm always you know this much that that much this I changes up every time I make it but that's a that's an excellent beer it's all wheat, delicious. That's a dunkel. See y'all later.